So today we are going to do a quick comparison of three different services that uh, can all accomplish the same thing and that's a hub and spoke type network. And what we're going to do, we're going to compare three, three services by two different companies. We're going to look at Comcast Ethernet private line, Comcast Ethernet virtual private line, and CenturyLink Metro Optical Ethernet. So starting off with Comcast private line, Ethernet private line, um, we see that we have a host, which could be a service provider, it could be a corporate headquarters, it could be a hosting provider, um, anybody who has got a central site that wants to connect to remote sites. And uh, in this case, Ethernet private line is simply what it looks like. It's it's point-to-point uh, -point circuits, dedicated bandwidth, no contention at the host, etc. So um, probably one of Comcast's strongest products, and to be honest, probably one of CenturyLink's least uh, competitive products, especially in the metro area. So, um, in this case, we see that uh, we have a 50 megabit, 50 megabit, 100 megabit remote site, and we total that up to 3230 with no discounts. Keep in mind that Comcast can discount anywhere from 10 to 30 percent based upon build costs. So, very attractive uh, product there. Now, the next one we're going to look at is Ethernet Virtual Private Line. And we see here that we have a, um, a host port which can um, be um, viewed as connecting as a single port into an Ethernet cloud and separating traffic with virtual paths. And that would be um, known as EVCs, Ethernet Virtual Circuits which is really going to be the same exact topology as the CenturyLink Metro Optical Ethernet. Um, probably the biggest difference between the two topologies is that Comcast only charges a single charge for a port at the host and does not charge for incremental bandwidth, unlike CenturyLink, which does, does um, charge for incremental bandwidth. Um, which of course is a plus for Comcast. On the other hand, CenturyLink does allow for subscription, so you don't have to have a uh, true one-for-one -one bandwidth. So in other words, we could lower the um, host down to 100 meg, which would make the pricing look more attractive, um, but it is over subscription. So here we see that the total of no discounts is 3,940. A good price, um, but not as good as the Ethernet private line. So uh, between these two, I'm going to make the call that the Ethernet private line is still the best for Comcast. CenturyLink Metro Optical Ethernet is uh, the most expensive. However, there are discounts available um, on individual case basis with this product as well and uh, the biggest advantage of the CenturyLink Metro Optical Ethernet is simply the fact that it's much more available much wider footprint um, much easier to get we're able to pre-qualify it much quicker so if I had to um, make a choice on what a customer would uh, want to go with that, that wanted to be able to reach as many different possibilities as they could within the same metro optical ethernet area. I would probably say that uh, CenturyLink would be my number one choice as the fact that it's got the most availability. And if you can get it, that uh, Comcast uh, Ethernet private line would be my next choice. And 
really, to tell you the truth, I'm going to give this number three for my third choice um, as far as the Ethernet virtual private line because I really don't see it competing with the um, Ethernet private line and let, until you can get less expensive. Now, it is possible that if we added up a lot more circuits on here that the Ethernet virtual private line could win out because you've got this this fixed price at the host. So this this in this particular scenario with the host in three sites, I would say uh, the Ethernet private line wins out. And of course, for um, to evaluate anything you need, you can reach us at ctg3.com.